I mean, like at least sweep the baseboards, at least sweep the floor, at least spray some air fresh. Hello, hello, welcome and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you are new here, my name is Nika and my channel is a little bit about everything. But today we're going to talk about real estate and this real estate market. Okay, I'm gonna go ahead and say, I want y'all to pretend like I'm your cousin for the sake of this video, just in case I yell a little bit. Um, but it's just because I'm like super passionate about this topic. I guess, yeah, I guess you can call it passionate. Passion, but it's not passion because I sell real estate uh, because that's oftentimes what people assume. Like anytime I try to give advice, tips or whatever, um, it's like, oh, of course you're going to say that you're a realtor. No, it just makes sense. And in this video, I'm going to break down why you should or should not buy in this current market. So this is for my people over the past two years who, you know, had an interest in purchasing a home because the market was booming interest rates hit an all-time low let me go ahead and say if you're expecting to see interest rates as low as they were during COVID, you can be waiting forever because it um it ain't gonna happen um but anyway people you know it really there was a lot of hype around buying a house and while there's it's always a great time to buy real estate i'm gonna just say that however the market that you decide to enter in can influence your experience and whether or not you ultimately purchase a home so you know, it was great to buy a home at two to three percent, even in the mid threes to low fours. However, with that comes a big demand. Um, I don't know. I, I like to assume that people understand the basics and the fundamentals of supply and demand, but maybe you don't. So whenever there's any good, not just a house, but whenever there's a good or a service that's amazing, right? the demand is going to go up. Like demand is just how many people want whatever that good or service is, right? So of course, interest rates are a heavy hitter and a huge factor when it comes to determining affordability and all of that great stuff, right? So when people were able to jump into the market and they realized that they had all this buying power, what came along with that was a lot of competition. So there were people who were waiving inspections and some realtors like to tell their people to waive inspections. I'm not saying that I'll never work with someone that waive inspections. I'm just not going to be the one to tell you to waive it because you will not, you will not blame me when you buy a house and floor cave in or the roof do whatever. Like, no. I'm going to let you make that decision on your own, but I'm not going to be the one to tell you to do it. Um, they were being beat out by people who were making cash offers or covering a, appraisal gaps, meaning let's say a house was, you know, listed at 315 and this person came in and they're like, we'll pay 350 for it. But let's say if the house appraises for 315, that means that they're going to cover that $35,000 gap out of their own pocket. Like, it was crazy, y'all. It was a bidding war. Like literally so many people have said to me, oh, you entered and you entered the market as a realtor in prime time. And then you decided to leave your corporate America job at the wrong time. It's not the wrong time. Things have just shifted. And I just have to be a little more creative in my strategies when representing my clients. But it's still booming. Like I, I like to tell people, and if anything, things are now swinging in the favor of buyers. We're in a buyer's market now. That's what it is. And so what that means for a buyer is there's less competition. Like homes aren't flying off the market in two seconds. Y'all literally, it was crazy this summer. Well, this summer and spring, I would literally send my clients like brand new homes that hit the market. And before we can even pull up, to go tour the home, there would be a pending offer. Like it was crazy. And it just wasn't, while interest rates were lower, the conditions of the market just wasn't favorable for people who, let's say, don't have a lot of cash or people who can't afford closing costs 
or people who can't afford to go into a home without getting get assessed to see what its structure looked like. You know, like it just wasn't favorable. So the current market that we're in, if you don't have a lot of cash, like use this market to your benefit. The thing, the biggest challenge that I'm having with some of my clients is a mindset shift, right? Number one, it's some of them may be um, upset at their pre-approval amount, right? Amount. But if this is your starter home, I tell people all the time, start where you can. I have clients who are approved for as little as 150000 up to millions of dollars. And I can tell you, my clients who are approved for a million dollars or close to a million dollars, it is not there for their first home. They started where they could. They understood the concept of delayed gratification and they house hacked their way to be able to afford a million dollar home. Like when I tell people, I'm always, always, always preaching the benefits of home ownership and the wealth, like the wealth building benefits, benefits of owning a home. People think that I'm just saying that just to say it, but no, I'm actually living it myself. The current home I live in, I could not afford this home when I first got approved to buy a home back in 2017. Literally, it's probably the house, my first house was probably a third of what my current home is worth now. Like I started where I could. And guess what? I don't know if my current home that I'm sitting in, I don't know if it's my favorite home. I love it. It works for me. It works for my family. But I do know in a couple of years, this home is setting me up to be able to buy a million dollar home. So go into it with the mindset of I'm go you utilize if it's your truly your starter home, it should be purely leverage. Of course, make make sure you can afford it. Number one, make sure you're comfortable. However, think about it. If you're currently renting now, right? And you're saying, oh, I'm going to wait it out. I'm going to continue to rent because I don't know. Interest rates, right? If you're paying a landlord, whether you're in a single family home, whether you're in a town home, whether you're in an apartment, whether you're in a condo, you are paying a mortgage. It's your landlord's mortgage, not yours, right? And year over year over year, your rent is going to increase. This is kind of why, like what made me want to buy a house in the first place because I was living a little further up north, right? I was not living in a luxury apartment and I got tired of every time I go to renew my, my lease, it's going up a hundred, $150. And there was no justification. Like there's not like I had upgraded appliances. It's not like y'all did anything, but the rent was constantly going up. Had I stayed in my apartment, instead of buying a home, I would not have walked away with almost $80,000 from selling my first home. And then I was able to apply that money to my current home. Had I stayed in my apartment another year or two, well, two years, I, that's how much I made in two years of owning my first home. I would not have been able to save $80,000 y'all. Like you have, just be honest, like assess it for what it is. When you own a home, when you buy a home, you not only build or buy into financial security, but you tap into something that's called equity. The difference of what the home, the market value of the home minus what you owe. That difference is your leverage. You can pull that out to renovate. You can pull that out to buy investment properties. You can pull that out to use towards a down payment of another home. Like there is, or start businesses, like fund your child's aspirations, their educational dreams, vocational dreams. There's a plethora of things that you can do with home equity. Ownership gives you options, y'all. And let's not even talk about the options you have with these interest rates. Number one, you're not forever locked into an interest rate, just like you're not forever locked into a home. You can always sell a home 
you can also always refinance. So a lot of people will say, oh, if I refinance, doesn't that cost? Well, right now, lenders are offering free refi like refinancing as long as you've been in the home for at least six months. You don't, you're, I always say, marry the house, date the rate. You're not locked in there. But furthermore, you have options to get your interest rate lower. So a lot of the new construction builders, they are offering to buy down your rate. So there's two options to walk into home ownership with a lower than market interest rate. The first one is going to be a 2-1 buy down. Not preferable, but in the seller's eyes, it's a little more affordable and beneficial for them because it's less out of pocket if they're giving you seller concessions for a lower interest rate. So that means that for the first two years, you have a discounted interest rate. So year one, it's the most affordable. Year two, the interest rate adjusts. And then by the time you hit year three, whatever the current interest rate was for the market that you bought your home in, that's where your interest rate, rate will adjust. At that point, you can always refinance or if it's your starter home and you only want to stay there for two years, then you sell it. Like it just makes sense. Or you can buy discount points paid for by the seller. Literally, I have had three closings this month and all of them have received closing costs, if not all, some concessions to buy down their interest rate. None of my clients this month necessarily use the 2-1 buy down program, but they did get discount points. So when you get discount points, that means that you're buying down the interest rate, which sometimes can be a little expensive. However, in this market, remember it's swinging in the buyers and buyers favor. In this market, you can utilize the seller concessions, which means the money or credits that the seller gives you towards closing costs can be used to buy down your interest rate. It's not temporary, it's over the life of the loan. So if you decide to stay in your home for five years, for seven years, for 10 years, the interest rate you pay for today, the rate that is discounted, the rate that the seller paid for, it remains over the entire life of the loan. Another thing is you have more inventory. Like literally this summer, especially like homes that were in more favorable neighborhoods, the school districts, all of that, they were flying off the market, y'all. Like literally some people who had no choice but to buy a home probably bought homes that they just didn't like at all. Like I said, if it's a starter home, of course it may not, you know, meet all your criteria, but it should have some, a majority, but some people who just couldn't afford rent anymore, they were just put in homes that it's just like, I don't really like it. But I, I hope that they, they, they you know, the, the best part about home ownership is you can do what you want. You could change the color, you can change the floors, you can change whatever, right? Um, but you have more options now. Like, and then there's price reductions almost every day. Like nothing major, but I think what's happening is sellers, you know, during COVID, I was one of the people that sold my house during COVID and honey, it didn't even sit. Well, actually I had an unofficial offer like within hours of my house going on the market. It was just a little, well, no, it wasn't coming soon status. It hadn't officially hit the market. So realtors and, and, you know, all those people could see my home, but the offer wasn't official official because the person was still waiting on a pre-approval, but it flew off the market. Like it was super favorable for me. And I think like with the media and people, uncle, brother, cousins, girlfriends, boyfriends, whoever, you know, oh, it's a great time to sell. Everybody wanted to sell because they were getting top dollar. Well, since the demand has slowed down, a lot of sellers, and, and I'll be honest, I have some clients that, well, potential clients that I'm having to remind, this is not the COVID real estate market. So you can't go in with the assumption that your home is going to sell for top dollar. You're not going to have to contribute to closing costs. You're not going to have to put some effort in. Can I get an amen? Because some of these houses I was showing doing like when interest rates were low, I mean like at least sweep the baseboards, at least sweep the floor, at least spray some air freshener. Like 
people was just selling their house under any condition and it was not a fun time for my nose or my eyes. But anyway, I did actually, I was fortunate enough to have a listing that hit the market last month and it was gone in 48 hours, y'all. It was, I'm gonna tell you, it was a little complicated transaction, but the favor of God was on my side because that house sold fast with a lot of contingencies. But anywho, I'm just having to have honest conversations with my seller clients about the reality of the current market. Like, things are different. Things are no longer in the seller's favor. It's the buyer's market. So I say all that to say, yes, the interest rates may be unfavorable, right? However, you don't wait to buy real estate. You buy real estate and wait. Like, that's the hack. That's the key. Like, that's all I got to say. Like, I don't know how, I don't know how else to explain it. However, if you got a lot of cash reserves and you don't care about, you know, having to pay closing costs or any of that, then maybe you should wait. But please be mindful that if you're waiting and you're on the fence about buying a home, and again, this is not for people who truly cannot afford a home. These are for people who are qualified, who probably received pre-approvals, but you're scared. Um, what you doing? Don't wait. <laughs> like, get your house. Save your money. Really leverage the current market conditions because guess what? It's going to be other people waiting. And when interest rates do start to come down, it's going to be the same thing as before. The bidding wars, the multiple offers, the beat out offers, you know, having to bring closing costs to the table. All of that, it may not be as intense as it was during the COVID times because, again, the interest rates were super duper low. And I highly doubt they'll ever get that low again. But I'm saying as the market starts to balance out, the competition is going to be high again. And if you didn't enjoy your experience the first time around with home buying, what makes you think that it's going to be fun next time around? Like if you wait into a seller's market when if you're waiting for, you know, the interest rates to come back down or whatever, the demand is going to go up. And guess what? When demand goes up, supply comes down and you just, it's back in, a, in the seller's favor. So, first of all, if you want to buy a house, of course, I'm your homegirl. It doesn't matter what state you're in because I have teammates who not only work all over the country, but all over the world. So, I can connect you with someone to help you if I can't help you here in Virginia. But, go for it. You will thank yourself later. Like, I promise you, you will. And furthermore, lenders are offering down payment assistance. Majority of my clients are not having to come out of pocket with a down payment, y'all. So not only can you get most of your down payment or all of your down payment, depending on your income and your debts and all of that, plus closing costs, you literally can buy a house in this market with Little to no money out of pocket, aside from, of course, you got to pay an earnest money deposit, which can be as low as $500 to buy a house. You got to pay for an inspection, which is probably going to run you between four to $600, depending on the size and style of the home. Plus, you have to pay for an appraisal. That's mandatory by any lender, unless you're paying cash for a house. That's just for your protection, for someone to come out and assess the market value of the home to make sure you're not overpaying. But aside from those things, you can walk away at closing with little to no money out of pocket. That's all. Sorry if I yelled. Sorry if I came off aggressive. But I just want you to open your eyes and really assess the situation. Like, can you afford to wait for interest rates to come back down? Because when they come back down, the demand is going to go up supply down so if you are in the market or want to be in a market i'm gonna leave my link my <laughs> my email down below email me but i'll also leave a link to my direct like new client consultation so we can get you going because if you ain't got a lot of money to put up front 
it's kind of pointless for you to wait. But toodles, see you next time.